You've likely heard of the Conjuring franchise, potentially even saw the films in theaters. It seems to be one of the fan favorite horror films of the 2010 era, potentially of all time, with the Conjuring universe now taking on a life of its own. Literally. At the time of this recording, there have been seven films in total, including The Conjuring 1 and 2, the three Annabelle films, The Nun, and The Curse of La Llorona. On top of these seven, there are three more feature films coming out in the near future, including the third Conjuring film, The Crooked Man, and an untitled Nun sequel. Fun stuff. Some of you may or may not know that these films, not all, but some are based on real life events, however incredibly exaggerated. That being said, today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if The Conjuring was real? Now some will argue it is real, while others will likely deny it until something supernatural happens to them. I'm just a host, so please don't make an example of me. Alright, smash that like button, let's get into it. Now as you likely know, the original Conjuring films are based on the stories of Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are paranormal experts or investigators. Potentially two of the most well-known investigators prior to the films, well, to no surprise, with the success of the Conjuring franchise, I think it's safe to say they are now the most famous. I mean, I don't know any other paranormal investigators, and before The Conjuring, I didn't know Ed or Lorraine Warren. So let me know in the comments down below if you know of any other paranormal investigators, because I find this kind of interesting. Like, how much money could you really make, you know? I feel like it's all just a cash grab. Did I just say that? My bad. Either way guys, in regards to Ed and Lorraine Warren, well unfortunately Ed passed away in 2006, but Lorraine was a consultant on the film and in her own words, I quote, the things that went on there were just so incredibly frightening. Some have argued that Ed and Lorraine are just very good storytellers, as neurologist Stephen Novella put it, citing the fact that the couple who also investigated the Amityville horror have also had that turn into a film. I quote him saying, you could do a lot of movies based on the stories they have spun, but there's absolutely no reason to believe there's any legitimacy to them. Of course, the Perron family, who actually claim to have dealt with these evil spirits in the Conjuring house, have also spoken out. More specifically, Andrea Perron, the oldest of five children to Roger and Carolyn, spoke with USA Today when the film was first making headlines. Although there are some similarities between the film and the real experiences the family went through, to no surprise, some of it was incredibly exaggerated. For example, in the film, the family only lived in the house for a short period of time, whereas in reality, they were actually there from 1971 until 1980. That being said, when asked why they didn't just leave the house, especially after Andrea explained how the family would consistently smell what they would believe to be rotting flesh and even had beds flipping over at 5 o'clock in the morning on their own, in her own words, I quote, I hear that question most every day. I think we were supposed to have this experience and share it with the world. Now that's, uh, alright. And of course, when asked about naysayers, Andrea explained, I quote, both my mother and I would just as soon swallow our tongue than tell a lie. But people are free to believe whatever they want to believe, but I know what we experienced. Now in real life, the Warrens were actually kicked out by Roger after he felt the investigation of paranormal spirits was taking its toll on his wife's mental health. Still, they decided to live among these spirits for about 10 or 11 years before finally moving out due to a financial struggle the family was dealing with. Now, take from all that what you will, as I previously mentioned, there have been numerous films or spin-offs related to the Conjuring franchise, and Andrea has now self-published three books about her experience or her family's stories, which again, I'll be honest with you guys, I fully back it. Regardless if you believe in this stuff or not, people will say it's fake because she's making money off of it, but the reality is, I mean, if you're dealing with it anyways, you may as well tell your story. Besides, you guys think Ed and Lorraine Warren would do these investigations for free? I mean, I don't know what they would charge, but I can promise you right now, the government did not fund their spirit hunting. Meaning people would likely have to pay an arm and a leg to pay for the pair to show up. And I'm not saying that's why the Perron family couldn't move out for 10 years, but I mean, it seems after Ed and Lorraine Warren were kicked out, the family stayed put for a little while. Just saying. Either way, let's talk about what happens if all of this was actually real, which I mean, it kind of is real, but exaggerated. So let's talk about if it was all right on the money, scene for scene, completely accurate. Well, that'd be pretty f***ed up. <laughs> now, all kidding aside, I think if all this were real, well, the entire world would be introduced to paranormal activity. It's no secret there are certain cultures, religions, or even areas in the world that are more into the belief of the afterlife, paranormal spirits, ghosts, and so on. But with that being said, I think the majority of people are in the camp of they need to see it to believe it. And with social media, I think a lot more people would be able to see and believe. Unfortunately, as we know, social media can be incredibly manipulated, with fake videos going viral all the time. There is great video editing softwares and tons of programs to make things appear to be something they're not. Which means even if the Conjuring house was haunted and people were actually able to film some sort of paranormal stuff going down, well again, I'm not so sure the entire world would believe it. That being said, I think a lot more people would than they currently do. And to no surprise, after the release of the film, people started going to the house, which at one time was owned by a woman named Norma Sutcliffe 
who would end up suing Warner Brothers in 2015, given that her home had become an unofficial attraction. They would settle outside of court, but in 2019, another couple would purchase the house. Corey and Jennifer Heinzen would explain to local news stations back in 2019 that although weird things were happening in the house, they weren't necessarily evil. I quote Corey saying, footsteps, knocks, we've had lights flashing in rooms, and when I say lights flashing in rooms, it's rooms that don't have light in there to begin with. I don't have the feeling of anything evil, but it's very busy. You can tell there's a lot of things going on in the house. And they've turned the home into an attraction and actually charged people to spend the night there. As you can imagine, it's not your typical bed and breakfast, but instead more of an experience you'll be telling your friends and family about for years to come. So in a sense, The Conjuring was and is real, just exaggerated. That being said, if the Heinzens start to run into paranormal trouble, well, who knows what happens. I'm sure people would raise money via GoFundMe to pay for paranormal investigators, and the couple living there may even become celebrities of sorts for all the wrong reasons. And when I say trouble, I mean they start to get attacked. As Corey explained, they're not evil, just a lot of them there. It's unclear why or when they turn evil, so we may just need to keep an eye out here. Now, as always, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. Do you guys believe in spirits and ghosts and the paranormal world? Do you guys believe in the story of The Conjuring in general? Do you guys think it's very exaggerated? Do you think it's real at all? Let me know your thoughts on all of this down below and if you guys have ever had any paranormal experiences. Now, I personally am not a skeptic, but I also don't like the idea of like testing spirits and ghosts to prove themselves, so I'm kind of just chilling here. For now, let's do some comment replies from the video. What does Obama confirming UFOs for America mean? Lucy Curious said, the real question is why every UFO video ever is in 144p quality. Yeah, they're all very grainy. It's like they're all taken with a potato, and I don't understand why. They're always very low quality, can't really make out what it is. It's something in the air. It's like, is that what we think it is? We don't really know, kinda, maybe. I don't know. Neon Pop 80 said, it's completely ignorant to say that most sightings are in the US. That just shows you're completely uninformed on the topic. The phenomena is literally in every place in the world. I never said, I, hold on. Okay, I appreciate you getting very passionate. I can tell you're very passionate, maybe like a little offended by what I said. I was more so pointed to the fact that like, the videos that I was citing in the video that I talked about were all taken in the US. Like from Jeremy Corbell, he posted videos like the US Navy found on the California coast in 2018 and then another one in 2019. Why the California coast? Why is it always the California coast? Why was it the US Navy spotted this? The Roswell incident is the most well-known well famous alien incident, I think, in the world. So it's not so much saying that alien things, I mean, I mentioned there's one that happened in Canada, in Manitoba, that no one talks about or no one knows of, because I'm telling you, the ones in the US are usually the ones that make headlines. Again, I live in Canada, so obviously the US media is gonna dominate even in Canada when this happened. So that's probably why. But I wasn't saying it only happens in the US. I'm saying the ones that I know of, the ones that seem to be making the most headlines, trending on Twitter, it's always specifically California. I am Aiden Smith said they never denied UFOs. It's kind of just something that's recently been discovered. I'm glad though. That's like saying they didn't lie, they just didn't tell the whole truth. Which in a form, it's not lying, but it's it's manipulating the situation, which isn't good either. So, anyways, guys, that is all for this one. I've been your host, Pepper, Mr. Spicy, as you can see. And uh, let's go alien hunting, guys. Let's do it. Forget the conjuring. Aliens. Let's do it. Aliens.